This section is on solving word problems with fractions. In this section, you will learn how to solve multi-step word problems, use the common denominator method for solving more difficult problems. When working with fractions, of indicates multiplication. Thus, 3 fifths of x equals 3 fifths x. 2 thirds of a number is 10, translates into the equation 2 thirds x equals 10. When you multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, the product is 1. Look at the equation from the last slide. 2 thirds x equals 10. To solve for x, multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of the fraction that is multiplied by x. In this example, the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 halves. We multiply both sides by 3 halves. Notice on the left of the equation, the 3 in the numerator of the 3 halves cancels with the 3 in the denominator of the 2 thirds, leaving 1. The 2 in the numerator of the 2 thirds cancels with the 2 in the denominator of the 3 halves, leaving 1. We're left with 1x equals 10 times 3 halves, or 1x is just x. And 10 times 3 halves reduces to 15. Therefore, we have x equals 15. Example 1, solving fractional word problems. Two-fifths of 15 girls and one-fifth of 20 boys in the class went to the school dance. What fraction of the students altogether attended the school dance? This is a multi-step word problem. Your first step is to find the number of girls and the number of boys who went to the school dance. The number of girls attending the, two, the dance is two-fifths of 15, which is six girls. The number of boys attending the dance is one-fifth of 20, which is four boys. Adding those two numbers together tells us that 10 students from the class attended the dance. The total number of students in the class is 15 plus 20 equals 35. The fraction of students at the dance was 10 over 35. We reduce to lowest terms by dividing numerator and denominator by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2, 35 divided by 5 is 7, and our final answer is 2 sevenths. Here are some practice problems for you to try. Pause the DVD after each problem. After you find an answer, come back to check it. Notice, however, that this section differs a little bit from the other sections because instead of waiting until the very end of the lesson to introduce practice problems, I've introduce them after each special topic in the lesson. That's because students tend to find fractions intimidating and I thought it was better that you practice right away. Also it's because the methods of solving the easy problems and the harder problems are different, sometimes very different, and it seemed better to practice each method separately. Practice problem one. Charlie's mother owns a collection of 45 classical music recordings. Of these, two-fifths were composed by Mozart, one-fifth were composed by Verdi, and one-third were composed by Haydn. How many of the CDs contain music that was composed by either Mozart or Verdi? The answer is 27. And the first thing we do is we find the number of pieces composed by Mozart, that's two-fifths of 45, which is 18. The pieces composed by Verdi is 1 -fifth of 45, which equals 9. Adding those two together, 18 plus 9 is 27. Practice problem two. Rhonda is buying fish for her aquarium. At the pet store, she buys 1 -sixth of the store's 30 black mollies and 3 fourths of the store's 8 tetras. How many fish did she buy? She bought 11 fish. First, find out how many black mollies she bought. 1 sixth of 30 equals 5. How many tetras did she buy? 3 fourths of 8 equals 6. Adding 5 and 6 together gives 11. Practice problem 3. What fraction of the store's black mollies and tetras did she buy altogether? 
The answer is 11 over 38. The total number of black mollies was 30, and the total number of tetras was 8. The store stocked 38 of these kinds of fish, and she bought 11 out of those 38. Important facts. Suppose two-fifths of the student body belongs to the chemistry club. What percentage of the students doesn't belong to the chemistry club? The answer is 1 minus 2 fifths, which equals 3 fifths. This example illustrates an important point. When you are dividing a group into two parts and know the fraction that represents one of those parts, the second part is 1 minus the fraction representing the first part. Example 2. Charlotta bought a pizza and ate it over two days. On the first day, she ate one-fourth of the pizza. On the second day, she ate three-fifths of what was left. How much pizza was left after two days? The next two slides show two methods for solving this problem. Method one, determine the fraction of what is left. If Charlotta ate one-fourth of the pizza on the first day, one minus one-fourth equals three-fourths, and three-fourths of the pizza is left. The fraction of pizza that was not eaten on the second day was two-fifths of the amount left over from day one. We got the two-fifths because it's one minus three-fifths, which is two-fifths. To find the fraction of pizza left over after the second day, multiply the fraction of the pizza that was left over from the first day by the fraction of pizza left over from the second day. That's 2 fifths times 3 fourths, which is 3 tenths. There's a second method that perhaps requires more steps, but that it's more intuitive. And that's the common denominator method. The first step in finding this solution using this method is to find a common denominator. The fractions in the problem were 4 and 5. We multiply them together to get 20. Note, for this method you are not looking for the least common denominator because for some problems that will create fractions that are even more difficult to solve than the original problem. Just multiply the original denominators and don't try to find a least common denominator. Now, because our common denominator is 20, imagine the pizza is cut into 20 slices. If Charlotta ate one-fourth of the pizza on day one, she ate one-fourth of 20, which is five slices, and there are 15 slices left. There are now, we now take the 15 slices and she ate three-fifths of the 15 slices, or nine slices. Notice that she ate 5 and 9 are 14 of the slices, therefore there are 6 slices left. That fraction is 6 over 20, which reduces to 3 tenths. Which methods should you use? If you are very comfortable with fractions, the first method is probably the easiest, as it is usually faster and involves fewer steps. If you are less comfortable with fractions, the second method is probably easier because the method's more intuitive. Example three, a house painter painted one third of a house on the first day and four sevenths of what was left on the second day. What fraction of the house did he paint in two days? What fraction was left unpainted? Understand that if he painted one-third of the house on the first day, then two-thirds was left. If he painted four-sevenths of what was left, then three-sevenths of the amount was left unpainted. To find the fraction of the house left unpainted, multiply two-thirds times three-sevenths, which is two-sevenths. Therefore, the amount painted was one minus two-sevenths, which was five sevenths. Method two is the common denominator method. Find the common denominator by multiplying three and seven 
and that common denominator is 21. Imagine the surface to be painted has been partitioned into 21 regions. On the first day, one-third of the 21 regions have been painted. Since one-third of 21 equals 7, that means that 7 regions have been painted and 14 have been left unpainted. On the second day, four-sevenths of the remaining 14 regions have been painted. Because four-sevenths times 14 equals 8, 8 regions have been painted while 6 regions have been left unpainted. The painter has painted 7 plus 8 equals 15 regions out of 21. This is 15 over 21. We can reduce that fraction by dividing numerator and denominator by 3 to give us 5 sevenths. Therefore, 1 minus 5 sevenths, or 2 sevenths of the regions, have not been painted. Example 4. Rhonda won a certain number of CDs at a music store. She gave half of them away. Later, she gave 3 eighths of the remaining CDs away. What fraction of the original number of CDs did she give away? To solve example 4, do it using the common denominator method. Multiply 2 and 8 to get a denominator of 16. Even though the least common denominator is actually 8, use 16 as a denominator to avoid nasty fractions later in the problem. Imagine that Rhonda won 16 CDs. If she gave half of them away, she gave away 8 and kept 8. Of the remaining 8 CDs, she gave away 3 eighths or 3 and she kept 5. Therefore, she kept 5 of the original 16, or 5 sixteenths of them, and she gave away 11 sixteenths. Practice problem 4. Rhonda cleaned 3 eighths of her house one morning. In the afternoon, she cleaned 2 thirds of the remaining part. How much of her house still needed to be cleaned? 5 24ths of her house remained uncleaned. Use a common denominator of 24. If she cleaned 3 eighths of the house, then she cleaned 9 parts of the house and 15 parts remained uncleaned. In the afternoon, she cleaned 2 thirds of the 15 parts, meaning that she cleaned 10 parts and 5 of the 24 parts remained uncleaned. Practice problem 5. While studying, Charlotta read one-eighth of the scarlet letter. The next day, she read one-sixth of the remaining part. How much of the novel remained unread? The answer is 35 over 48. Make the common denominator 48, which is the product of the two original denominators. If she read one-eighth of the book, she read one-eighth of 48, which is six parts, and 42 parts remained unread. If she read one-sixth of the remaining 42 parts, she read seven of the remaining 42 parts. Now she has read a total of six plus seven equals 13 parts of the book. In this case, 35 of the 48 parts remain unread, and that's expressed as the fraction 35 over 48. Practice problem six. Charlie and Jeff caught many speckled perch on their fishing trip to Lake Okeechobee. The first hour after they came home, they cleaned one-fourth of their catch. The second hour, they cleaned one-third of what remained. How much of their catch is not yet cleaned? One-half of the catch remains uncleaned. Use a common denominator of 12. If they clean one-fourth of the catch, they have cleaned three parts, and nine parts remain uncleaned. Then if they clean one-third of the catch, they have cleaned three parts, and a total of six parts remain uncleaned. Example five, solving a more complicated problem. A sports team won five of its first 12 games. If there are 54 games in a season, what fraction of the remaining games must the team win in order to have won two-thirds of the games in the season. First of all, find out how many games the team must win in order to win two-thirds of their games. 
2 thirds of 54 is 36. The team must win 36 of its games. Find out how many games are left in the season. There are 54 minus 12 equals 42 games in the season. Find out how many more games the team must win. If they want to win 36 and have won 5, they need to win 31 more games. Therefore, they must win 31 out of the remaining 42 games. Practice problem 7. A basketball player makes 7 out of 9 free throws. If he was given 45 free throws during the season, what fraction of the remaining free throws must he make to score four-fifths of his free throws? The answer to practice problem 7 is 29 over 36. The player has a total of 45 free throws. He has used 9 already and has 36 left. To get four-fifths of his 45 free throws, he must get 36 free throws altogether. He already has scored 7. 36 minus 7 equals 29. Therefore, he must get 29 of the next 36 free throws. Practice problem 8. A quarterback completes 5 out of 9 passes during the first quarter of a game. During the remaining three quarters, he completes three-fifths or six of his passes. What fraction of all the passes during the game did he complete? The quarterback completes 11 19 of his passes. The trick is to determine how many passes he made during the last three quarters. He completed three-fifths of them or six. To find the total number of passes attempted, set up the equation 3 fifths x equals 6. Solve for x and get 10. He attempted 9 passes in the first quarter and 10 in the rest of the game for a total of 19. He completed 5 plus 6 equals 11 out of the 19. Practice problem 9. A student taking the SAT scores correctly on 8 of the first 12 questions. If there are 30 questions in the entire section, what fraction of the remaining questions must the student get right in order to get 5 sixths of the questions correct? The student must answer 17 out of 18 of the remaining questions. To get 5 sixths of 30 questions correct, he must get 25 questions correct. He has answered 8 questions already correctly and has 18 more to answer. Therefore, he must answer 17 out of the remaining 18 more questions correctly.